Whoa! Somebody really wants to get your attention this morning. That would be me. Ah, so there's a uh, there's a little framed quote in my office. It's been in my office. It's been in offices of mine for close to 30 years. Sometimes it's been in boxes, in a box, but, but other, most of the time it's been hanging on the wall. And uh, it looks something like this. Actually, it looks exactly like this because I took a picture this morning. And it goes like this. The secret of success is constancy to purpose. The secret of success is constancy to purpose. First time I heard that, I went, that's it. That's how to do it. I was pretty young when I, uh, when I began this journey of revealing my, my purpose. So the idea of purpose has always intrigued me and been valuable to me. Um, but this comes much long, further back than me. It was, it's a quote from Benjamin Disraeli. You ever heard of Benjamin Disraeli? He was, he was the Prime Minister of Israel, right? No, actually he wasn't. Doesn't that name sound like he should have been? He lived long before Israel was reestablished. Uh, he was actually Prime Minister of, of Great Britain uh, in the mid-1800s. Uh, he, he was a, he, when I, I, you know, when I got, realized it was him that said this, I had to know a little bit about him. So what I want you to know is not only was he British Prime Minister, but he was uh, uh, twice British Prime Minister. Uh, grew up Jewish, but left the, uh, the uh, uh, synagogue because of an argument he had uh, with the rabbi. And became an Anglican, uh, got into politics, ran several times before he was elected, um, and, uh, and, and kind of just by the things that were going on in British politics at the time, rose to the top, was, uh, 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 had several major positions, but became prime minister. Now, I looked at the prime ministers before and after him, I never heard of any of them. But this man I know of, and I think he's an amazing example of how this works because his political career was not pretty. You know, sort of like Lincoln's, it just wasn't pretty. He, got, he was cantankerous, he was strong-willed, and he had a tumultuous career. But, so why was he so successful? Because he understood that the secret of success was constancy to purpose. He knew what his purpose was in life, and he lived by that, no matter what. No matter what was going on, that's what he did. He stayed in alignment with his purpose. And because of that, he achieved great success and had a great influence on the people of the British Empire. Whoa, really? You don't have to be nice to be successful? <laughs> you actually don't. You don't, you don't. There are a lot of things you don't have to be, but what you have to be to be successful is be in constant alignment with your purpose. That's what it takes. So when I, when I bring up this conversation of, of uh, purpose, People think I'm talking about a goal or an intention. No, 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 no. This is the direction of your life. That's what it's about. It's about you came in to do something, to, to not, not a thing, but to, to move life in a certain direction, and that's why you're here. And if you're doing other things, you're not doing your purpose, and you might as well, you know, just hang out in a closet somewhere. You're not making a difference. We often say... In your life, you can do anything. And it's true, you can do anything. But there's a certain area of action in life that is yours to do. So don't try to do everything. Try to do what's in alignment with your purpose. And if you do, you'll see the result of that in many ways. So how many people here know what their purpose is? Can articulate that if I, if I pointed to you, could actually tell me in words what your purpose is right now? Raise your hand. Good for you. That may be the largest percentage of any group I've ever talked to about this. If you didn't raise your hand, it doesn't mean you're wrong. It doesn't mean you don't have a purpose. You do. But there's value. There's value in being able to say it out loud. There's value in being able to refer to it because it's like a compass. If you know what your purpose is, then you can refer to it and go, am I doing things, what I'm doing in my life, the direction of my life right now, is it in alignment with my purpose? That will tell you if you have words that you can attach to it. It's a quote for, oh, this is the definition, so we're all on the same page, with this idea of purpose. 
purpose is a noun, and it means the reason for which something is done or for which someone exists. <laughs> Think about that. <laughs> you did not come here to take up space. You did not come here to use up resources. <laughs> you came here because there's a purpose to your life. There's a reason for you to be here. This is what Rumi says. Everyone has come with some particular purpose, and the desire to live that purpose exists in everyone's heart. Anyone here not feel a yearning from within you? Right about you, in you? That's that desire to live your purpose. And when you're in alignment with it, life seems to work. And when you're not, guess what? Not so pretty. When you're in alignment with your purpose, and you know what your purpose is, that's an easy fix. But well, how, what if you don't know? What if you, what if you say to me, I can't articulate my purpose? It doesn't mean that it's not within you. It is. It is. It's in everybody. There's no, nobody gets out of that. But what if you can't yet articulate it? How would you go about that? Well, let's start with mine. My purpose is to reveal and release the presence of the divine, or divine presence, wherever I am and whatever I do. That's why I'm here. Now, it didn't come that easy. I didn't just wake up one day and there it was. Actually, I did, but let me get you the beginning of the story. <laughs> didn't happen that easy. When I was, uh, I think, 21 years old, I paid my way to my very first motivational gathering. It was called Time Power. And it was taught by a gentleman whose name I don't remember, but I know he was an interesting fellow, and he filled a, uh, a, a hotel uh, uh, room, a big, a big uh, conference room, banquet room, that's it, with all these people, hundreds and hundreds of people, and he talked about purpose. Purpose. He said, you got to know your purpose. And he gave this great talk. He was just an amazing speaker and shared wonderful stories, which I will not give you now because we've got only so much time. But uh, he did say his purpose out loud. And it just went right through me. And I said, I want that. So during a break, I went up and I said, could I look at your purpose again? And I looked at it and read it, read it, read it, read it, read it. And went home and wrote down as close as I could what it said. And I put it in, he was selling daytimers too, by the way. So, yeah, so I put it in the daytimer that I bought and I had it there. And if someone said to me, what's your purpose? I would go, hold on a minute, let me go get it. <laughs> It wasn't my purpose. It was his purpose. But I tried to steal. Don't do that. So I can show you my... Whoa, let's go back a little bit. I get a little heavy with this thing. Let me sit down. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I played with that for years and had that in it. And it, it, it was a start. It was a start. Don't make it wrong. It was good. And then I, I had the opportunity to work with a man named Robert Schuller. And, and that was in the heyday of the Crystal Cathedral. And I, had, I was there working at the Crystal Cathedral. And he set his purpose one day. And it had to do with creating something out of nothing, creating the visible out of the invisible. It was just elegant. I wrote it down. <laughs> there it is, there it is. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. And then one day, and I don't know what day it was. I don't know where I was. I don't know the circumstances at all, but it just came. My purpose is to reveal and release the power of divine presence. Wherever I am and whatever I do, that's my purpose. Everything I do has to align with that, or I'm miserable. When am I miserable? When I'm in judgment? Because how am I finding divine presence and really revealing and releasing that if, if I'm ticked off at somebody? How, how do I find that if I'm angry? How do I find that if I'm afraid? It's not there. So I have to remember who I am. <laughs> I have to remember that I'm the presence of the divine and that that which dwells in me dwells in everyone and when I see someone as less than I lose I don't want to lose I want to win I love to win and I'm good with everybody else winning too that really works for me but I can't take responsibility for the whole world. I can't carry that burden. I carry my knowing who I am and why I am here. And I also know that you are here for a purpose. And I have heard some of your, you speak your, your purpose statement. And some of you have the most elegant, eloquent statements. And I know they're real for you because you just light up when you say it. 
Those of you that don't, creating a purpose statement is your homework to know. <laughs> what you probably don't know is that John L. comes to the center every Sunday morning, something between 6 and 7 a.m. She often is either making bread, making coffee, but she also comes and smudges. Barbara used to smudge everything, she or I did. And, and Janelle has taken that on. Janelle was not feeling well a few weeks ago, and she called Barbara and said, would you mind smudging the center for me? Think about that. <laughs> Isn't that lovely, ownership? Anyway, when she comes in, she often says, are you speaking today? And when I say yes, she goes, are you giving us homework? <laughs> so I don't want to let you down, Barbara. Your homework is to create a purpose. And the purpose... Uh, there's only some very easy things to talk about around the, what, a, what a purpose statement looks like, and I want to give them to you. There we are. An effective purpose statement is, oh, no longer than one sentence. Now, mine's a pretty lengthy sentence. It doesn't have to be that long. But no more than one sentence. Don't go to, to a second sentence or you, you are overstating it and you're getting lost in it. One simple statement. One sentence. It also must be easily understood by a 12-year-old. <laughs> Don't get too fancy. Mine's probably a little bit that way. But make it as clear and concise and brilliant as you can. And know it. Boy, when, I, when that came to me, it was like, yeah. And, and, you know, I was 21 when I started that journey. I don't know. I was in my 30s before I really got it. You don't need 10, 12 years. You don't need that. Just know it. Let it be done. Because you've been living with it all your life. It's never been absent from your life. And what you're doing when you create a statement with it is you're making friends with it. You're letting it be okay that this is going to be And the last part is to, that you want to be able to recite it from memory no matter what's going on. So that somebody says to you, what's your purpose? You can just rattle it off because it's your second nature. It's your first nature. It's who you are. So I invite you to do that, to really look inside of you and say, why the dickens am I here? What did I come for? Not for a task, not for a, an outcome, but to move creation in a direction. What value do you bring every day of your life? What is it? And when you know that, it heightens your sense of self. It heightens your awareness of your divinity. God came to earth, not as one man 2,000 years ago. God comes to earth every single day. God is in the midst of who we are because we function from that reality. And when we remember that and live from that, and the thing that connects us is our purpose, then we fully bring our gifts to life. Ernest Holmes, our founder. I believe absolutely that he knew his purpose. I never heard him say it. I, I have no recordings that tell me what it was, but I absolutely believe that he knew why he was here. And he alone built the foundation of this movement, collecting information from Thomas Troward and Ralph Waldo Emerson, but also from the ancient mystics, from the great Greek philosophers, from the teachings of the Hindus, from all over the world he collected ideas. He called it science of mind. And in so doing, because there were no science of mind ministers, there was no one in that movement but him, as he taught it to more and more people, guess who showed up? Ministers from other faiths. Going, oh, this is way better. I want to do this. So we created this thing. And he had no intentions of it being called a church. That was not his idea. He actually at one time put out a, a, a shingle that said that he was a Christian science practitioner. He didn't have a license, though. <laughs> but he knew there was something. He was in alignment with his purpose. He knew there was something there. So he continued his work, and he touched so many lives, thousands and thousands and thousands of lives, and ministers came and convinced him to turn it into a church. You know, I'm sure the IRS helped him with that, too. But <laughs> the point of that is, is that is that as it progressed, something happened and he moved away from his purpose with it. And it ended up splitting into two movements. Just a momentary thing, but it's amazing. You can do some momentary things and they look like they're staying around. What I want you to know about your purpose is it doesn't guarantee 
that you won't have challenges. It won't guarantee that you won't do things that you wish you didn't do. Still, when you are clear of your purpose, none of those things matter. Those things that look like mistakes don't matter. Because you get up and you dust yourself off and you keep going. Because you remember your purpose. That's the gift. That's the gift. So no matter what's going on in your life, you always have that to remember. When things get hard or confusing or out of balance, you go back and say, why am I here? What am I doing? And you remember that thing. And you use it as the greatest tool of your life to carry you again in that place, that direction that you have chosen, that you know is your reason for being here. And by doing that, you are again being successful in creating your life. Nobody would question, even with the split of our movement, that Ernest Holmes was successful because he was. So what about this split? And am I going to stop talking about it, right? I want to read a letter to you. This is the last known letter that Ernest Holmes ever wrote. He wrote it on March 8, 1960. It's on letterhead. And the letterhead says, Church of Religious Science. And it begins, Dr. Raymond C. Barker. And Dr. Barker was the head of the group that left. But he sent it to Dr. Raymond C. Barker, Church of Religious Science. Ooh, same name on the top of the page in the letterhead that says Church of Religious Science, Ernest Holmes, founder. However, on this address it says New York, New York, because that's where uh, uh, Dr. Barker did his services in Manhattan. He actually did them in Alice Kelly Hall at Lincoln Center. I mean, this was a prestigious undertaking that Raymond Charles Barker had. He writes, my dear Raymond, I have been intending to write to you for some time, but for the first time in my life, I got sick. It is thoroughly disgusting, and I haven't enjoyed one minute of it. I guess I don't have much patience. At any rate, I am much better and undoubtedly will be up and at them again very soon, but there are a few days where I wasn't sure. The only helpful thing I can see as coming out of it because I don't believe suffering is imposed on us to save our souls or anything else, since that is silly. <laughs> is that it, had, it has made me wonder if we have the best possible physical structure for the long pull. He's talking about his body. I know we come nearer to having everything than any other group, but not that we are better or more holy. God, I hate holiness. And not that we are any more important because you and I are no more spiritual than a couple of black spiders. I have never found out to my complete satisfaction what is meant by spirituality. But I do know that consciousness mean, what consciousness means, and you do too. But we do have the best possible structure for some permanent good to happen in the world. He's talking about our organization. I have long since lost any personal interest in a movement, in parentheses, as though it had anything to do with me. But I don't want to shuffle off and leave a weak spot that might have been worked out. So I have been going over it in my mind while lying here in bed, which is a stinking thing to have to do, and I hate it. <laughs> and of course, I know I should love it and praise it and bless it and all of that, which I most certainly do not do. And I would be a liar if I said to you that I did. <laughs> Isn't this revealing? <laughs> what I am really getting to in all of this crazy confession is that you are a plenty smart cookie. And I am sure your interest is in the permanency of the movement. The same as mine. Even though we are on two sides of the same coin. I don't mind as long as the coin is clean. If you can think of anything that could be added to our physical structure, which would make it stronger in your estimation, I would be glad to have you let me know. And next time you're out here, that's Los Angeles, we can discuss it. Of course, I know the whole thing will come back together when the time is right, merely because it is the logical thing to do. And I think in the long run, common sense usually wins. Adela writes glowing accounts of your work, and I am very happy she is able to be with you. 
Meanwhile, more power and everything good to you. Artist Holmes. So I believe that our purpose can actually outlive us. Because it took us a good 50-something years, but we did it. We brought it back together. It's all one again. We're doing good work in the world. We're making a difference. We're bringing these teachings to people all over this planet. We have, have centers and study groups and teaching chapters on every continent except Antarctica, but give us a little time. <laughs> I actually spoke at a church in Phoenix, and they reported at the end of it their live feed actually went uh, to Antarctica. So we're actually touching that continent as well. Mm. One more thought. Back to Ruby. To Ruby. Anyone who genuinely and consistently, with both hands, looks for something will find it. That's true for all of us. We are bringing our gifts to the world. We are also seeking to find something revealed, and that is within us as well. The answer is, we are the divine. We are the presence of God. We are doing this good work, and the world is responding in kind. It's a good thing we do. Yes? Yes. yes. Let's keep it up. I love you very much.